Hello everyone, I'm So In Hyuk and he is Ang Kang Hyuk and we will talk about protein folding problem today. The contents are like this. As we all know, proteins are high molecular compounds that make up our bodies. 20 kinds of amino acids are entangled and twisted in different order to form more complex structures. Our question of the protein folding started from here. How do all these amino acids form fold to form the ultimate polypeptide structure? Can it be said that the structure of the protein is determined by its amino acid sequence? To answer this question, first, let's take a look at the Levinhaus paradox. How do proteins make the transformation from the various amino acid sequences to their own? One of the possible explanations would be trying every possible form to find the most energetically favorable one. How long would a such a, ran such a random search take? If we assume that we make a small protein with 100 amino acids, which could take three different forms like this, the total number of the structures would be like this. And the total time for searching would be like this. It would be uh, obviously impossible. It would take too much time for an even small protein to fold properly by randomly attempting all possible forms. However, the time for the protein in a real world fold is very short in comparison. This enormous discrepancy between the best number of the potential protein confirmations and the observed rapidity of the protein folding is called Levinhaus paradox. So, what answer can we come up with this paradox? The answer to this can be found in terms of thermodynamics. In order to understand how chemical equilibrium works, two factors are needed to be considered, energy and entropy. Energy is one of the important factors that determine which chemical changes occur spontaneously. Just as the water flows from high to low, natural chemical reactions occur spontaneously from high energy to low energy, like this. Every substance tries to become stable. In other words, the energy tries to become lower. Another factor that can predict the direction of the change is entropy. Entropy is a measure of a randomness. Boltzmann defined entropy like this. S is the entropy, and KB is the uh, Boltzmann's constant, and W is the number of the states a system can have. And we can see that as the number of the cases increases, the entropy also increases. Every natural phenomenon changes from an orderly state to a disorderly state, which is the change from a low entropy to a high entropy. In summary, the energy tries to, energy tries to decrease and the entropy tries to increase. So, in alchemical reactions, the state of equilibrium is determined as a result of competition between the tendency to decrease energy and the tendency to increase entropy. To explain this phenomenon more easily, Free energy is designed by considering both energy and entropy. How much free energy A is defined as follows. U is the energy and T is the temperature and S is the entropy. Let's differentiate both sides of the equation and see its properties. Uh, I'll just go fast because it's just organizing the equation. The conclusion is important. Since dA is smaller than zero, uh, it can be seen that all reactions occur spontaneously in the direction of reducing the free energy of the system. The same principle applies to proteins. Uh, protein folding occurs to decrease the energy of the bone, uh, decrease the energy, free energy of the protein itself. As you can see in this figure, energy decreases as the number of the bones between certain amino acids increases. Meanwhile, entropy increases in an unfolded stage because the number of cases with higher energy increases. Therefore, protein folding can be explained accurately by only by comparing the magnitude of the free energy according to, to the uh, protein state change. Let's briefly talk about the temperature dependency of the protein in relation to the free energy. According to the free energy property, we can explain why proteins are easily denatured by the temperature. Let's approximate the process of protein folding that there are two thermodynamically stable states, the folded and the unfolded. D 
the y-axis of this graph indicates a free energy, and the free energy can be represented in, as a curve as shown in this picture. There are two minimum points and the barrier between the two. Depending on the temperature conditions, the, tape, uh, the shape of the curve will change like that picture, and the more stable state can be identified. Generalizing this indicates that proteins have optimal free energy structure depending on the temperature. And when the temperature changes, the equilibrium state also changes. So we could check that the structure of the protein can easily be denatured. When the above free energy curve is extended to third dimension, the curve space of the free energy appears like a landscape, so we call this a free energy landscape. In general, the protein will appear in a recessed form in the free energy landscape because the free energy of the protein is lower in the folded state than the unfolded state at the temperature of our body. Let's assume that the protein's energy landscape appeared, the form, appeared in the form of a small, deep hole in the middle, which lacks, looks like a whole course. In this case, a random search for the natural state would pro prove impossible, like this. It is not appropriate to explain the actual process of protein folding, as in Levinton's paradox mentioned earlier, because it takes a really long time to find the protein ball falling into the natural state form. A model that has emerged as an alternative to the both host models is commonly referred, referred to as a funnel model. The ground state has very stable energy and few structures, so it forms a deep valley, whereas unstable states have a higher energy and a wide shape. Proteins are folded sequentially, sequentially according to the stage corresponding to the funnel wall, eventually forming an ultimate structure corresponding to the final minimum point, like this. To summarize, the funnel theory suggests that the folding of protein doesn't occur at random, but it accumulates in a direction of lowering the free energy and ultimately forms the final structure with the lowest free energy. Now, let's talk about the protein structure prediction problem. A protein is a complex biological macromolecule composed of a sequence of amino acids. The functional properties of a protein depend on its three-dimensional structure, but we are still not clear about their functioning. This is the protein structure prediction problem. From now on, we're going to tell you a way to solve this problem. By the thermodynamic hypothesis of protein folding, the global minimum of the free energy function is assumed to be the intrinsic functional form of the protein. So the goal of the protein structure prediction is to find the global minimum of the free energy function. As you can see in this picture, we can find out that the protein's folding state is at the global minimum of the free energy function. Now let's find out how we can solve this problem. The solution of the protein Folding problems that follows like this. Modeling the protein structure, defining energy properties, and developing an efficient algorithm for predicting the structure. This time we're going to show you an effective protein model that can solve the protein folding problem in a simple form. And this is the two-dimensional lattice model. Finding low energy three-dimensional structures is a difficult problem, so we use two-dimensional lattice models. In a two-dimensional lattice model, the arrangement of protein-defining amino acids is considered to be the arrangement of beads, which represents amino acids linked by strings, which are peptide bones. So the example of the two-dimensional lattice model looks like this. And as you can see, the chain of the beads occupies points on a two-dimensional lattice. Now let's take a look at the hydrophobic polar model, which is a representative example of the two-dimensional lattice model. The hydrophobic polar protein model is to predict protein structure using only the hydrophobicity of amino acids, first proposed by Dill in 1985 as a way to overcome the significant costs and difficulties of predicting protein structure. The hydrophobic polar model is one of the simplest of two-dimensional lattice models. In this model, amino acids are classified only in two groups, hydrophobic and polar. In our presentation, the hydrophobic model amino acid will be black, 
and the polar amino acid will be white. While there are only two kinds of amino acids in the hydrophobic polar model, actually to present protein energy, more sophisticated descriptions that allocate interaction energies for pairwise interactions between 20 amino acids must be considered. These are the hypothesis of the HP model. The first rule is that there are only two possible residues, hydrophobic and polar. And the second rule is that when two hydrophobic residues are adjacent to a space, there is an interaction that lowers the energy by any unit of minus one. And at this time, the two hydrophobic residues must not be connected. Third, it should be sequentially connected without overlapping. Fourth, it is only possible to move up, down, left, and right. And the last rule is that the intrinsic structure of a protein becomes the form that maximizes the contact between hydrophobic residues. Then how does this HP model solve the protein folding problem? The HP model performs on the assumption that the protein folds in an aqueous environment. So using the HP model, we can know the place where the protein gets folded. Uh, this model aims to find out protein folding by minimizing the free energy of the contact between hydrophobic amino acids so that it can quickly estimate the protein structure by representing the protein as a short chain on a two-dimensional square grid. Now let's look at an example of the HP model. Given the sequence of a protein, the sequence in which the HH contact is maximized can be obtained as shown in the following figure. This picture shows the result of the HP model. The model shows the energy volume minus three because there are three neighboring HH pairs that are not connected to each other. Now let's figure out the energy function of the two-dimensional lattice model. In a two-dimensional lattice model, the energy function is expressed as the following equation. AI and AJ refers to the i and j amino acids, and PI and PJ refers to the position of AI and AJ. Epsilon AI AJ is a constant and is determined by different protein models and indicates the type of action between different amino acids. The value of the function indicates the effect of the action of each pair of amino acids on the energy of the whole system. If we use this function to the HP model, the HP model focuses on the interactions between hydrophobic amino acids, and the energy at folding is reduced only by neighboring hydrophobic amino acids that are not connected. In the HP model, there are only four kinds of interactions of amino acids, so the values of the constant appear as follows for each pair of amino acids. Only the HH pair's constant has a value of minus one, and the other pair's values are zero, so they don't have effect to the total energy. Now, look, now let's look at the delta function. The function outputs one if amino acids and amino acids are adjacent but not connected. Otherwise, it outputs zero. If this is expressed as an equation, it is defined as follows. Absolute value of I minus J is bigger than one, means a condition that two amino acids are not connected. And this means a condition that Manhattan distance is one, indicating the conditions for the two amino acids to be adjacent. If these two conditions are satisfied, the two amino acids are not connected and are adjacent, so the function outputs one. So the HP molar energy function consists like this overall. If both of the, these amino acids are H, the constant value is minus one, so it affects the, to, the total energy by minus one. In other cases, the function's output is zero. The function can find the effects of the HH pairs, which is the energy value of the model. If the number of the HH pairs increases, the energy value gets lower. So we need to find a configuration with the highest number of HH pairs. This way, the function can find the global minimum of the free energy function, which is assumed to be the intrinsic functional form of the protein. If you compare the HP model with reality, on the left is the two-dimensional lattice model, and on the right is the protein folding in reality. Next is the HP model complexity. This is the examples of HP models in the order of HPPHPH. 
When the number of amino acids are few, we can find out the structure we need through naive enumeration. But when the number of amino acids is bigger, number of arrays excluding symmetry in a two-dimensional grid model gets exponentially increased. This shows that although the two-dimensional lattice model may seem very simple, the folding of the amino acid structure becomes more difficult as the number of amino acids increases, which means that there is no efficient algorithm to answer the question, is there a structure of peptide X that has a, an energy lower than E? At this time, what, what is the lowest energy structure of peptide X is difficult to verify and solve. To conclude this presentation, the structure of proteins can be explained using free energy, but it may be too complicated to predict the structure. The protein folding problem has been solved to some extent through the two-dimensional lattice model as we showed. Thank you for listening to our presentation.